In this video, we're going to look at the newly released LEGO microgame. This is now the fourth microgame that Unity has made, and this one, as the name implies, it's all in partnership with LEGO. It's a 3D third-person platformer with some really interesting behavior breaks and brick building system. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Alright, so let's check out the LEGO microgame. Like I said, including this one, there's already four microgames available. The microgames are great starting points, especially for beginners or anyone who wants to quickly prototype something. First was the 2D platformer, then the cart microgame, and then the FPS microgame. I covered the FPS microgame and even made an awesome game using it as a base, so go check it out to see what you can easily build when you take the microgame as a base. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Now here, let's check out the latest one, which is the LEGO microgame. Now first up, we need to install it, and in order to do that, you need to be using Unity Hub 2.4. So if you're on an older version, make sure you update it. Then on the installs, make sure you have a Unity 2019.4 version installed. So this is the LTS version. In my case, I have it installed already. And then this version of the Unity Hub comes with an update to the new project window. So we'll go into the projects tab and here click on new. Now here, make sure that it's showing the LTS version, so 2019.4. And now the updated part is over here, the template section. So you've got the default ones and then it downloads an updated list. And when it's done, you can scroll down to see all the various templates. So down here, one of the ones that you see is indeed the Lego microgame. So when you see it, just click on the download button. And when that's done, just select it. All right, so then here, give it a name. Let's make it the Lego microgame and just hit on create. All right, so here we are right away inside the microgame. Now here we see two options for getting started. You can go ahead and explore on your own, or you can start with the guided tutorials, which is kind of the main point of the microgames. They provide you with a guided path to learn and modify. It teaches you about the various windows, like the hierarchy, inspector, scene view, and so on, and also guides you to make some changes in the game and play them. So you should definitely go through the tutorials, especially if you are a beginner. Now in my case, I won't go with explore since I've already done the tutorials and I want to showcase the game in action. All right, so we have the game. Let's hit play and try it out. So here it is. It's a third person action platformer. So you've got basic movement along with jumping as well as a double jump. And the whole world, as you can see, is made up of Lego bricks. Over here, we've got a platform made up of Lego, some pickups made of Lego. Then over there, we have a random creature. And the world is all made up using Lego. So we've got a whole bunch of pickups. We've got our double jump. And then we even have a win condition, so we touch this, and there you go, we won our nice microgame. Alright, so that's the basics of the microgame. Now, this particular microgame has some really interesting systems with behavior bricks and the brick building system. Essentially, you can select tons of basic bricks, just like real life LEGO, and snap them into position, again, just like real life LEGO. And then some bricks have some custom behavior that you can mix and match to make some really interesting complex behaviors. So let's look at both of those systems. First up over here on the scene view, on the top left corner, you can see these two buttons. So the left one enables the brick building connections and the right one defines the brick selection. So these two make up the brick building system. So let's see what this does. Now in the project files, you have tons of stuff to make pretty much anything you can think of. And since it's Lego, everything is built up from a handful of basic bricks. Now over here on the island, if you go into this right one, you can see down here, we have some basic bricks already placed. So you can see we have a normal 2x4 brick, then we also have some ramp bricks, some plants, and this one with the different connector. So you have these, but you also have more basic brick types. If you click on this and you look in the inspector, over here you can see they're all inside a game object named Star Bricks. So this one was originally prefab, so you can go over here into the prefabs folder, go under Lego models, and in here you have the brick collections. So you've got the Star Brick, which is all these. Then you also have another one named Cool Bricks. So let's go up here to a different island. Let's go into this one. 
and just drag the cone bricks on there just like that. So here you can see we have a ton more of brick types. So you've got some random circles, you've got some extenders, you've got different shapes of basic bricks. So you've got pretty much anything that you can use to build just about anything. So if you're familiar with Lego in real life, this should all be quite familiar. Now, if you select a single brick, like let's say this two x four one, over here in the inspector, you can see the attached components. So you have a brick script and a Lego asset script. Now, in working with this micro game, you really don't need to touch the scripts at all. Everything works simply with drag and drop. Now we do see a warning here. It's saying we cannot recolor the brick because it is inside a prefab instance. And that's because we are editing the bricks over here inside our actual cone bricks prefab. So we don't want to directly modify these ones. Instead, we want to use these as a base and copy them and use them elsewhere. So we want to duplicate it. But before we do that, let's go up here and make sure we have the brick building disabled. Okay, so the connection is not enabled. Now over here, click Control D. So this duplicates our object. So there you go, we have our copy right here. And now we can move it, let's say, move it just in there. And in the hierarchy, just drag the object outside of the prefab. You just drag it up here. Yep, it's no longer part of the prefab. All right, so here we have our normal brick. And over here, we can now see and we can access the tilting column. So for example, let's go with a different one. So over here, you can pick a yellow, you can pick pink, blue, green, and so on. You even have slightly transparent. So yep, just like that looks really interesting. Looks exactly just like Lego. All right, we have our brick. Now let's do the same thing to copy a standard two by two brick. So there's this one right here. Now again, be careful that you see these other ones, but these are behavior bricks. So as you can see, they have a bunch more scripts attached to them. We're going to look at those in a bit, but for now we want the basic brick shape. So it's this one right here that doesn't have any more scripts. So again, let's just duplicate it, drag it outside of the hierarchy and just move it near that one, okay? So we have our two nice bricks. And now that we have these two, let's use the brick building system. So for that, let's click on this button in order to enable the connections. And now we click and drag on this brick. And as soon as we start dragging, it starts following the mouse. So now we can let go of the mouse. And now the brick is still following the mouse. And the way it works is it automatically attaches to whatever is under the mouse. So as I place the mouse over this, yep, there you go. You can see that it snaps into the various valid positions. So I can put it in there, put it in there, and so on. So this will automatically snap into valid position so you can connect these two bricks very simply. So just click and yep, there you go, it gets placed exactly on top on the perfect position. Now if I want, I can leave the brick building system enabled and just hit Ctrl D and now I'm holding another one of the exactly the same type and let's put it on this corner. All right, so there it is, we have a basic brick shape. So this is the brick building system. It automatically snaps into the perfect positions. Now, by the way, before we go further, let's just make one quick note here which is we drag the cool bricks prefab. So here it is, we have this one. And as we saw in order to play around, we should really take them away from the prefabs first. So we can do it the way that we did. Or another approach is over here, right click on this one and then select unpack prefab completely. So if you click on it and yep, there you go. Now we have normal separate objects inside of a home prefab. So that's just a quick tip for unpacking prefabs. All right, so we use the brick building system to make our very basic brick shape. And now the other button next to it is for selecting a single brick or all of the connected bricks. So in this case, with this mode, I can click and select just that one, just that one, or just that one. And if I click to select the other mode and I click, it selects all three of them. So it selects all of the connected bricks. Now the other awesome system are the behavior bricks. You can find them down here on the project files all inside this folder, Lego behavior bricks. So this is a really awesome system. Essentially, each one of these bricks has a specific behavior and then you can combine them and place them on top of objects to really define some complex behavior. So it's sort of like visual scripting, except instead of connecting dots in a virtual graph, you place behavior objects physically in the world. Right now to play around with it, let's use our nice shape. So selecting the whole object and with the connection system enabled, let's click and drag, all right. Now let's go to where the player spawns, so right here, and let's drop it right in there. All right, so here it is, our nice shape. And by the way, another thing, you can rotate with Alt-D, so just click and hold this and press Alt-D, and there you go, it rotates on the various directions. All right, so we have our nice basic shape, and then down here we have our behavior bricks. Now let's try out the hover behavior. So it's right here, we have the hover behavior brick, so make sure that brick building is enabled. And now let's click and drag this anywhere on the scene, and there you go, now it's following the mouse. And now we just go here and click to place it exactly on top of our object. And yep, there we go, that's it. We've now added a nice hover behavior onto our shape. So let's try hitting play. And yep, right away we see our object and it is indeed hovering up and down. So that's how the system works, it's really simple. You just place down behavior bricks and they do a certain action. 
Now, like I said, they can be combined in order to make some really awesome behaviors. So our object has a hover behavior brick. Now let's also go here in order to add the rotate. So again, just drag it in there. Now it's following the mouse. Now I click and I place it right in there. And now if we hit play, and yep, there you go. Now it's hovering and rotating. So as you can see, it's a really intuitive system. You just connect the bricks and everything works. And even though it is very simple to use, it's also very powerful. So for example, let's go here on this area and let's look into our Lego models. Let's go down here into environment and we have a nice mountain. So just click and drag and place it right in there. And now, for example, let's go into the behavior bricks. And over here we have the explode bricks. So just click and drag and let's place it right on top of our mountain. And then here on the script for the behavior bricks, you can also play around the parameters. So for example, over here we have the power. So we've got a power of 10. Let's make it quite a bit more intense. Let's put it something like 30. All right, so this brick will explode and destroy the mountain. And now, like I said, you can combine multiple things. So over here on our special object, let's add a nice touch trigger. So down here we have a touch trigger, which like the name implies, it will trigger an action when the player touches it. So just click and drag it onto the scene. Let's connect it onto our object. Now over here, you see the touch trigger script. And here for the things, you see the scope where you can select to affect all the connected bricks or just this brick. And then you see the target, which can be the connected actions or can be specific actions. So connected will essentially activate all of these and specific actions, you can then give it a specific action. So in this case, we want to touch this and explode the mountain. All right, so here, let's put it to the size of one. And now we need to assign this action. So over here, we have our explode object. So just click and drag and drop it right in there. And down here on the sense, this is what is going to sense for. So it can be the player for all bricks or any specific bricks. In our case, we want it to be the player. So when the player touches this, it's going to explode the mountain and do a really nice explosion. All right, let's test. All right, so here we are. We have our nice rotating object. And over there, we have the mountain with the explosion. And now as I approach and as I touch this object, boom, yeah, there you go. The mountain explodes and everything goes out flying. All right, so you can see the complex behavior you can make by combining simple actions. So we added a touch node, then we connected it to an explosion. And as soon as we touched, it exploded. Now, like you see, this one takes actions. So for example, you could connect this to the rotate and for example, rotate a door only when you touch a button. You could make it touch to enable an elevator or so on. So down here, you can see all of the various behavior bricks available. So you've got the alive, which makes something seem like it's alive. So it jumps up and down. Then you can play some audio. You can have an elevator moving a platform up and down. You can have the explode. You can have the hazard, which does damage to the player. You can have the hover, which moves up and down. Can I have the look at, which will look at a specific point, like for example, the player. Then you have the lose, which will cause the player to lose the game. You have the move moving in a certain direction. You have nearby trigger, which triggers when the player or anything that it's sensing is within a certain distance. Then the pickup trigger, which gets triggered whenever you touch a pickup. Then the pickup, which is like this one, you can pick it up. Then the platform, which is the same as the elevator, but goes horizontally instead of vertically. Then a random trigger, which triggers a random action at some point between these two values. Then the rotate, which rotates an object. The shoot, which fires projectiles. Then the timer trigger, which triggers an action after a certain amount of time. The touch trigger, which as we saw happens when something touches the object. And the win, which makes you win the level. So you see how you have some basic simple actions that you can then combine them into really interesting ways. So for example, you could make an enemy. So over here, let's go into characters and let's drag, let's say this bird right here. Then let's go into the behavior bricks and let's drag the lookout brick. So this will make sure that the bird looks at the player. And again here, make sure that this object is rotated correctly. So this one, we want it to face forward. So let's pick it up. But to do that, let's select just one to just pick up just the object. So pick it up. Now press Alt D to rotate. And okay, now the eye is facing forward. So place it like that, okay. Then let's also add a shooting brick. Again, make sure that it's facing forward and select the look at and down here, let's make a pause of zero. So it always looks at the player. Let's test. And yep, there we have a bird and wherever I go, it's looking at the player and it's constantly firing projectiles. And if it hits me, yep, there you go, I'm dead. All right, so you can see how this system is so powerful. You can combine all of these behaviors in order to make some really interesting scenarios. And then just like all of the other micro games, you have a bunch of mods on the official Unity Learn website. So these are all guided step-by-step -step tutorials to modify the micro game even further. So at the time of this recording, there are three mods available. So one of them is on swapping the main camera with a different one included in the project. Another one is on including a locked area. 
and the last one is on building a custom enemy. Check them out on the official Unity Learn website. Alright, so that's a brand new LEGO microgame made by Unity. Now these microgames are all really interesting and a great starting point for beginners to learn from. If you haven't seen it yet, then go watch the video on my awesome game based on the FPS microgame. It shows you what you can build by taking these microgames as base. Alright, now go ahead, open up Unity and play with some LEGOs. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Post any questions I have in the comments and I'll see you next time.